Okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, the first thing I did was to cut my top and my bottom pieces to length. Um, and then I started working on these upright pieces. Um, effectively what I did is I took one of these blocks and I split it lengthways to make uh, each side. Now, in, uh, in the process of making this up, uh, I determined that just splitting one of these uh, was not going to be thick enough to suit me. So I went out and I bought uh, an 8-inch poplar board and I laminated it to the outsides in order to give me uh, more thicker, substantial uprights. So here we are at this point. Um, I've cut out for them to sit in, in the top and the bottom, and this is pretty much how um, it's going to orient. And you are on the side where the face of the rudder stone is going to be, and then I am standing here on what will become the back. Now at the moment this is really is just loose, and uh, I don't have it together. Um, I did check it for square, and it's really close, which is surprising for me. But um, at this stage, I'm really happy with how everything is coming together. Um, I cut these uprights to 16 inches, I think. Let me just check. Yes, I cut them to 16 inches, and I inset them into the top and the bottoms one inch, and so... It's not an exact square, it's uh, a little bit off, but side to side on the inside, we're at 14 inches, and from top to bottom, we are at almost 14 and 3 16 So it is a little bit taller than it is wide, but in the grand scheme of things, that minor difference isn't gonna hurt anything at all. Now the next step uh, is to lay this over and to draw out the, the circle and figure out uh, how, where the, uh, where I'm gonna cut the circle at. So this, this will fit over the runner stone. So that's my next step. So here we are over at the mill, I've taken the box that I've just made and I've set it here uh, in front of the runner stone, which it's eventually going to encompass. Um, I've spent a little time uh, getting it set uh, in the correct orientation related to the stone. So the simplest way that I could determine on how to make a mark on this box to know where to cut and where not to cut so that I don't make a mess of things, um, I set it up got everything kind of level, square, where I want it to be. Uh, and then I came over with my little pencil. And I set my pencil against this uh, bit of metal here. This bit of metal is the largest diameter around this stone. So I set my little pencil against that and I held it against the wood and I just turned it and made a mark. And uh, that seemed to be the most simplest way to figure out where to put the cut on this. Uh, I'm sure that there's mathematical ways of doing it with compasses and, and fancy things, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, this mark that I've made is not my cut mark. Um, this only tells me the maximum diameter of my, my whole stone assembly here. Um, the way that this mill actually works requires um, more space on the inside. So I'm actually going to have to add to this and bring my mark out and cut out more material. And I'm thinking, if I remember correctly from my drawing, I think I'm adding a half inch 
uh, of, of additional space above this mark so that my entire cutout will be a half inch larger than that. The reason is since this mill is oriented with the stones horizontally, when you grind, all the product drops to the bottom of the box. And this little bit of metal's purpose on the runner stone is to pick up that product and drag it across the top and drop it out the chute, which I haven't cut yet, on the other side. And so it's constantly picking up material and dropping it out. So it's kind of like a little, a little elevator bucket uh, in, in some ways. Um, so that's why I have to add a little bit extra space um, in here uh, to make sure that there's enough room to accommodate the ground product being pulled over. Uh, there would be a great fear and concern that if you didn't have enough space, the, uh, the mill might bind up uh, and something would potentially break at that point which would be very bad. So this is just how I've figured out how to actually make the, the cuts on the interior of the box. And once I do all the measurements and extend this outwards, uh, I feel like that I'm going to be able to um, actually cut out this radius with the, the table saw. Uh, rather than a bandsaw. Um, if you have a bandsaw, this would probably be a much easier cut, but I don't own a bandsaw, and so I have to use the tools I have at hand. Now, one thing that you might notice are the gaps that I have here in the corners. And this is something that I am going to have to address. I have gaps in each of the four corners. Pretty sure, yeah. So I've got gaps in each of the four corners, and my solution to that will be to uh, cut blocks and to fasten them into each of the corners. Originally, the corners would have been filled, and so I'm gonna put it back that way. Uh, I do actually have a sheet of uh, stainless steel that I will be putting into the interior of the box. So it's a thin strip of stainless steel that's gonna go all the way on the, in on the inside. Um, and uh, that's just a nice little extra uh, that didn't come with the original mills way back in the day. Um, so I know that Meta's does that when they rebuild their mills and so I thought that was a really good plan and I'm going to do it myself to have that stainless steel service uh, easy to clean that's really why it's going in there so but yeah so that's where that's that's uh, the next this is the next step in the bottom plan is to uh, make these cuts and hopefully I will be able to show you that process So you can see that I've got these square corners and that's not necessarily good. Um, really I want these corners to be rounded off just like my sides are. And you can see that the way that I've made my box that the bottom corners are bigger than my top corners. Um, it was actually designed that way. I knew it was going to come out like this so uh, that's not a surprise. Um, I have some extra bits that I have uh, cut off in the process of making this thing and it, are, it is those uh, extra blocks that I have which I'm going to uh, fit into this, these, these spaces. And then the whole idea is actually to give it that round edge so that I end up with a nice smooth round box. Now on the other side that will become the bedstone, interestingly I do want 
these corners in that part of the box. And now that I actually have a box, it's going to be a little bit easier to explain why. Um, so let me just kind of lift it back up here a bit. Um, the bedstone is going to be uh, made in a very similar manner. The, the circle isn't quite as, it doesn't need to be as precise as what I really wanted this side to be. Um, and that's because the bedstone is going to be uh, laid down on top of the runner stone. The box will be set over top of it, and then I'm going to pour concrete uh, in around the bedstone. And that concrete is what's going to hold it in the box. And having these corners on the bedstone box means that the concrete will get down in there and it should and probably will prevent the, uh, the stone from moving. So effectively, I'm going to take my round stone and make it square is really what I'm going to do. Um, that's how the other mill that I own is made. Um, and I'm pretty looking at pictures from brochures, official brochures. That's how the original ones were made as well. So uh, I feel pretty good about what I'm doing. But effectively, the bedstone box is going to be made pretty much like this box. The, uh, the only exception is that uh, the bedstone box isn't going to be quite as, uh, quite as thick. So it's, it's not going to be quite as thick as this box. The, the runner stone box has to be a little bit thicker because the stone moves in it. And uh, you want to have enough space at the back so that the stone doesn't run into the wood at the back. Um, so that's why it's a bit thicker. The other thing that I'm going to have to do with this box is, um, well, I've got it upside down, but I'm going to have to cut into this upright. I'm going to have to cut in at a tangent to the stone a slot. And into this slot, uh, is the chute where the product is going to be uh, exported out of the mill. It's actually the, the chute's going to go that direction. Um, because uh, if you remember, um, I talked about the stone turning this way, and it would pick up the material off the bottom, bring it around, and drop it out the chute on this side. And uh, I've got a pretty, pretty good idea on my master plans of where this is going to be and how this is going to be put in there. And that does also remind me that this particular corner uh, I'm not going to fill. I remember now I'm not going to fill this corner because if I remember correctly uh, my cut is going to be kind of up in this vicinity uh, on the top and then the bottom is going to be down here somewhere. Um, and so having this open will just make it a little bit more, to give it a wider opening at the top for the product to be ex exported outside the mill. Um, so stick around, um, and eventually we will end up with a complete mill. So I got a little ahead of myself and forgot to turn the camera on, so I've done a little bit. Um, and so since I've remembered, I wanted to stop and give you kind of a situation update as to what I'm working on at the moment. Um, so I've gotten the box in place and I have my bolts set in here. And these bolts go all the way through to the bottom of the sill. And I've countersunk under here for them to fit into and I've gotten them set in here and they look pretty good. Um, now, one of the things that I mentioned in the earlier video is that I was going to route out the, this piece, this wooden piece, to accommodate for this bolt. And as you can see, I have not done that. Um, there are two reasons for not doing that. The first reason is that I'm not the best woodworker in the world, and there was an extra challenge doing that. 
So I opted to go this route as well. Um, the second reason, which I think is a little bit more practical, and probably what I'll actually tell everybody, is as you can see this material here where I've cut out the circle, um, it's pretty thin right there. And if I round out even more material, that might compromise even more of the strength of this upright piece. So I think putting it on the, the outside with a little bit of space behind it, um, I think that'll work out just fine. And as long as I do everything the same way, it'll look good. And that's really what's important is does it function and does it look good? And I think it checks both those boxes in this instance. So that's what I've done here. Now what I'm working on right now are these pieces, which are hinged, and there's a short one and a long one. The short one goes in through this block, and it goes in like that. And then we have this piece, which can swing free. And it swings around, and it goes into a slot that I haven't cut yet into the, the upright block for the bedstone. And it's this bolt which holds the bedstone to this box. Now here you can see where I put the through hole at and what I did is I drilled a small hole all the way through it from this side and then I used a larger bit which is an 11 16 to uh, drill this hole and I actually drilled it for both sides and I know I kind of maybe ruined my polyurethane, but I can always come back in and, uh, and fix that. But I'm going to show you. There we go. So as you can see, it's a little bit fiddly getting it in there, but that's kind of what it's going to look like. And it'll be oriented this way so that the bolt can swing properly on its knuckle. And this is sufficiently in the wood and so it's not going to tear out this way at all and there's plenty of space in here for this to operate it doesn't hit this upright bolt at all even when it's oriented straight like that so it's in really good shape so it's not going to bind up or cause me any problems so just things you have to think about when you're building this kind of stuff and the slot that this one goes into, I will cut that slot once the bedstone box is built and I've mounted it to the upright block and I've gotten everything set where I want it to go. Then I'll figure out where exactly to, uh, to cut the slot in that box. So this is currently what I'm working on. Um, the next step is to actually take this apart and glue it back, glue it up, sand, well, sand it, glue it, stain it, and then do some touch-ups on these uprights and whatnot and get it all in here. So, making progress. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it to be informative. Um, if you do, please like the video, and if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below, and I will do my very best to answer any and all questions you may have.